Praise God, Reverend Doctor Webb is here from Mom. And today we're coming from Genesis chapter 22. That's Genesis chapter 22. God says Abraham. Amen. And let's just pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for allowing your people to return once again today to people. And we just pray that you bless your people with the knowledge that they need to build a stronger relationship on this day. Amen and amen. So how are we doing? And I pray you see a difference, a tremendous difference in your lives with your spouse on today. Genesis 22 is where we're going to come from. Genesis 22 and our title is God Test Abram. God Test Abram. Now, last week, if you remember, we talked about what the Bible says about husband's duties in marriage. Um, prior to that, we talked about Father Abraham. Prior to that, we talked about the husband's spiritual role. We talked about the wife's role in marriage. We talked about Abraham relearns an old lesson. The impact of sin on marriage. Um, Genesis 17, the second covenant. Genesis 16, Sarah and Haggai. What the Bible says about the impact of the fall on marriage. Genesis 12, Abraham's slow start. What the Bible says about male and female marriage relationship. Amen. So again, we on Genesis, coming from Genesis 22, God tests Abraham. God tells Abraham. What's the whole point of this chapter? This is a test of Abraham's faith. What was God asking Abraham to give up by sacrificing Isaac? Isaac presented the covenant in Genesis 17. And let me say that again. Let me reframe that. Isaac represented the covenant in Genesis 17 and its promises amen the promise that God made to Abraham okay and only thing Abraham had to do was to leave his father's house thank you Jesus so our application has God or is God now asking you to give up anything that you would like to hold on to and you need to pray about that because he always asks us to give up something to prove our fidelity to him. Amen. No, the trip to Mount Moriah was about 50 miles, about a three days journey. Imagine what the atmosphere was like as they walked along. Imagine how Abraham must have been feeling. Three days must have felt like an eternity when embarked on such a task. And you know what the task is? This is when God is asked Abraham to sacrifice his only son. Amen. Isaac. Although we know he had another son, but that son was lost to him in the wilderness. And Abraham didn't know if that son made it or not. How old do you think Isaac was at this time? Probably late teens or early 20s. We aren't told for sure. In verse 7, Isaac asks Abraham about the sacrifice, pointing out the other provision. Do you think he was questioning his aged father's ability to remember to bring everything necessary for the sacrifice 
He waited until the two of them were alone to add. Was that to keep from embarrassing his father in front of the servants? Okay. This is respect Isaac is showing now. Respect that we need to show. The Bible does not answer these questions. What things do you think might have been going on through Isaac's mind at this time? And so I want you to ask and answer these questions because it's important in our relationship when we are interacting with other people or dealing with other people. Some people don't like me to say dealing with other people. So interacting with other people. What do we know about Isaac? One, he was strong enough to carry the wood. Two, strong enough to have resisted if he had chosen to do so. Three, old enough to understand the principles of sacrifice. And four, old enough to have a strong personal faith in God. Amen. What is the significance of Abraham's statement in verse 5? We will worship and then we will come back to you. What did Abraham believe? God would raise Isaac from the dead. Hebrews eleven nineteen. So I just want to let's go to 22 and 5. Let's see what it says. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and he, the lad, will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Amen. So, we will worship and then we will come back to you. What did Abraham believe? Okay. And we know he believed that God will raise Isaac from the dead if need be. And we can find that in Hebrews 11, 19. And we can go to Hebrews and see what Hebrews says. Because we don't want to do anything on our own matter. Hebrews 11, 19 says, According to... Excuse me, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from which also he received him in a figure. Amen. So at this time, David, um, Abraham had matured a bit. Okay, let's move on. Isaac didn't resist Abraham's attempt to bind him. And place him on the wood pile. What does that say about the relationship between Abraham and Isaac? They had a special relationship based on trust and love. Abraham must have invested considerable time and effort in being a dad. Men, in order to become a dad, you have to invest time. It's the same thing with being a husband. You have to invest time in the relationship. You cannot allow a job, a career, to take so much time away from your family, your wife, or your children that you do not give them quality time. And quality time could be 15 minutes a day or 15 minutes when you come home that you devote time to each one, your wife, your one child, your two child, your three child, no matter how many children you have, each one of them deserves at least 15 minutes of your time when you come home. Because some men travel, this is why I say that some men travel, you know, they may be, um, away from home overnight or for weeks day and night I mean this is what happened with soldiers you know but the good thing about our generation from the past generation they have Skype so you can actually talk to your family members on the computer screen amen and see each other remember 
back when we were children, I remember watching the Jetsons and seeing um, them talk, use the telephone like a, a computer screen. So that just lets us know that we're doing that today. So they were planning on doing these things way back then. So don't um, let anything slip you up. A lot of times, those cartoons that we watched as kids revealed a lot to us about the future. Amen? So, Abraham and Isaac had a special relationship based on trust and love. Any relationship has to be based on trust and love. Once you lose the trust factor, you have no relationship. Abraham and Am must have invested considerable time and effort in being a dad. And that's what we would want you to do. In being a husband and in being a dad. Isaac was obedient and trusting in his father. Why? Because this is what he developed in their relationship. He developed being a obedient, trusting son. He had a submissive heart. And here, being submissive is strength, you know? And most children want to be submissive. And most wives want to be submissive. But they need a strong male figure. And the strength does not come from verbal or physical abuse. The strength comes from love and treating people the way you want to be treated. Strength does not come from cruelty. Amen? Isaac must have had a strong faith in his God, not just his parents' God. So Isaac must have built a relationship with God by watching his father. Amen? Remember, your life may be the only Bible a person picks up. They see you and they want what you have. Amen? And this is what happened with Isaac by him watching his father and seeing how God was blessing his father. It made Isaac grow stronger to God. So note, Centuries later, when God gave his son for us, it was on the very mountain where Abraham had offered his sacrifice. We know this from 2 Chronicles 3.1, which identifies Jerusalem with Mount Moriah. Then Solomon began to build the temple of the Lord, in Jerusalem on Mount Moriah, where the Lord had appeared to his father David. In Abraham's day, there was no temple on this mountain. In fact, there was not even a city. It was a desert, barren place. But the fact that this was the place God intended to build his city and where he intended to have his son Jesus die explains why he had Abraham make the three day journey to get there because it took Jesus three days. So you see how the scriptures represent the, the, the scriptural path, the Old Testament also shows us who Jesus is and shows us God's plan and this is why it's so important to read the Old Testament because his plans are in the Old Testament. God was showing that it was on this mountain, Jerusalem or Mount Moriah, that he would provide our salvation and it was in Jerusalem that God placed his name to abide. And this is why the um, Jews had to come to Jerusalem at least three times a year 
for three of the seven feasts. Amen. So I hope I'm connecting the dots for you as we go along. Abraham was willing to sacrifice Isaac. What does that say about Abraham? Does that say that he was an abusive father? Does that say that um, he was mean and cruel? It says that he feared God. Abraham feared God. He would not withhold anything from God, even his promised and long-awaited son. At this particular point in time, Abraham had meditated on that three-day walk, meditated, thought, pondered on the fact that Isaac was the promised son. God had told him that. So since God had told him Isaac was the promised son for the future, if God took Isaac's life, there was no future because Abraham did not have another son. As far as he was concerned, Ishmael was dead to him. Amen. He was nowhere to be found. He was not the son of promise. Thank you, Jesus. What does it mean to fear God? This is a question that many people ask. Because we see this in the Bible over and over and over again. To fear God. So what does it mean to fear God? Not terror of punishment, but awe in the face of the holy. It's not a terror like when you're really frightening somebody and you want to get away from them. It's not a terror of punishment, but awe in his face, in the face of the holy. Can you can you imagine? Ah, oh, I'm face to face with God. Look what, what God has done for me. All powerful, good, and just God. The fear of the Lord is an attitude of humility and the beginning of wisdom you are humbling you are humbling yourself because look what he done for me who am I that he would do this for me praise God and many of us need to see it and understand it is not us it's the God in us that he works his miracles. Amen. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. And you find that in Proverbs 9 and 10. To fear God means to reverence him as sovereign. Trust him implicitly and obey him without question. And this is what a lot of us do not do, but this is what we need to do. Obey him without questioning. Amen. Note, long after Abraham's time, God will establish a complex system of animal sacrifice for the Israelite people to observe. At this point, nothing formal had been established. Though altars and covenants with slaughtered animals hint at this, all animal sacrifice were a shadow of Jesus' sacrifice. The perfect Lamb of God, which was to come in the future, not even Abraham's promised son, Isaac, could have filled that role. At this point, God provides an animal sacrifice for Abraham to offer a ram. Now, I must say this. In today's society, we are missing a lot of people because they're being placed as human sacrifice. As human sacrifice. And why do I say this? Because 
We have good and we have an evil. And although Jesus went to the cross for us and died for us, so we no longer have to have animal sacrifices, those ritualistic sacrifices. Remember, Satan, team of evil doers, must continue their sacrificial ritual, which we know because we read them in the Bible, they were burning children. Amen. They were doing all sorts of things to people as a human sacrifice in those tribes that God told the Israelites to stay away from them, to come out of them. Do not worship their God. Do not practice their religion or their rituals. Amen? So we must continue to pray, gentlemen, to pray for men and women, boys and girls in this country and throughout because Satan is throughout the world. He is the God of the earth, of the air. Amen. So how did God respond to Abraham's willingness? He confirmed his covenant. God confirmed his covenant with Abraham. And he added, your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies in Genesis 22 and 17. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies. Amen. What does this episode on Mount Moriah reveal about our God? What can we expect from him? He will test us. He will reward our faith. Because it's a test of faith. And when we pass the test, he rewards our faith. He sees us and is with us in our most trying times. He provides. Now, when we don't pass the test the first time, each time, because the test comes back until you pass it. Amen? And since this is a marriage series we're talking about, I want to just focus on marriage here and reveal what God has shown me. If you're married to a spouse and you don't work out and you divorce, the second time you get married, the problems you had from the first marriage now doubles and it gets worse. It behooves you to stay in the marriage, try to work it out. Because now, here it is, you divorce this person and you get married the third time, and now it triples. Amen. And it continues on until you surrender, husband, till you surrender. Because a lot of men don't realize that they are the dominant factor in the relationship. They control the relationship. And this is what you should have learned already from our beginning study, where we say that men have that power to persuade their wives. Learn how to use your power of persuasion instead of brute force. Amen? I'll say it again. Learn how to use the power of persuasion instead of brute force. Because brute force is not necessary in a, a husband and wife's relationship, in your relationship with your spouse. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. So our application. What are some ways your faith has been tested? Because your faith has already been tested if you are a child of God. You have been tested already. And you will continue to get tested. And understand this is why God put you through the test. It is not for now. It is so that you can prevail. You can have victory. If you're sitting 
in the same spot when the end time comes. Because no man knows the hour when Jesus is going to come back. No man knows the hour when that clock starts ticking and you wake up one day or you it's noonday and you're now in that seven year tribulation period. Amen. So God oh. prepares you by testing you. Amen. The test is to strengthen us all. Thank you, Jesus. So our application, what are some ways your faith has been tested? How did you respond to the test? Did you pass or did you fail? If you didn't pass, then you know the same test is going to come again until you pass. In Genesis 4, God punishes Cain for killing his brother. Now God seems to be commanding or commanding Abraham to do something that he had already forbidden. And what was that? To kill or murder someone. God had forbidden us to be murdering anyone. And you learned that back in chapter in Genesis 4 with Cain and Abel. That goes against his express displeasure and his character. Is God contradicting himself? No. But a lot of people say the Bible is contradictory. Why? Because God did tell Abraham to kill his son. But did he? This was designed by God to be the ultimate test for Abraham. It had to defy logic. And this is what God does. He defies our logic. It had to be something that Abraham would resist or not want to do. God did not require him to sacrifice Isaac, only to demonstrate that he was willing to obey. This wasn't a policy statement for all of Israel. It was a unique one-time situation strictly between God and Abraham. So God is not going to call you husbands and daddies to sacrifice your child. He is not going to do that today. If you get that notion, understand if that notion is coming from the enemy. Amen? He is not going to have you walk away from your child. You know, it, it, and, and I have to say this, although I am not agreeing with divorce or agreeing with um, single parenthood, you know, but I know this generation made a lot of mistakes. And so you men probably have babies out there by other women that you're not marrying. But it's still up to you to take care of them children. Financially. And to spend time with that child. So the child does not feel rejected. So the child does not feel that their life isn't worth anything. Because their parent, their father did not want them. Did not love them. Amen. I'm here to tell you that today. Because a lot of men do not understand what they do to their children. They make them have low self-esteem. They predispose, it, predispose them to evil, homosexuality, going in and out of prison, all sorts of trouble. It's when their mothers who have a godly sense within them that can redirect their child to come to Christ that these children end up being productive without a daddy in their lives but then they start hating their father and when you want to be bothered with this child the child is not going to want to be bothered with you understand that and take heed do something about it now while they're young 
let them know you love them amen that is so very important so here your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies and through your offerings all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me genesis 22 15 through 18 and you can read that on your own this passage contains the first use of the word obey in the bible amen and notice here i'm not going to just leave this alone this is the first promise that Abraham received. Through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed. We will get a chance to be redeemed from the curse of disobedience that Adam placed on each one of our lives. Amen? And this is why we become Abraham here, spiritual here. Amen? Abraham's obedience here was an immediate obedience. This was apparently a great characteristic of Abraham's life and is undoubtedly an important secret to his spiritual growth. He had learned that there is no substitute for instant obedience and that a postponed obedience is usually no obedience amen so abraham learned that when god tells you to do something do it immediately and if you do it immediately you will be blessed if you take your time you can lose your blessing because there's a window there that's open you can miss that opportunity amen and don't let people say oh you can't miss it you can miss that window of opportunity thank you jesus so no there are several parallels between this event and the event surrounding the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. And let's see what they are. Abraham represented God the Father, who, out of love for mankind, gave his only son as sacrifice for sinners. John 3.16 Next, Isaac is a type of Christ, who submits to the will of his Father, did you ever think about it like that? That Christ submitted to the will of God. He loved his father so much. He wanted his father happy. Next, Isaac bore the wood as our Lord bore his cross. Genesis 22 and 6 and John 19 and 17. John 19 and 17. Next, the ram is like Jesus, a sacrificial substitute. Remember, in the day that Jesus died, the ram, the original ram, the original sheep that was supposed to be slaughtered, ran away. So Jesus was the substitute for that sheep. Because what is a ram? A male sheep. Next, after three days, Abraham received his son back. Hebrews 11, 19. And after three days in the grave, Jesus arose from the dead. 1 Corinthians 15 and 4. So you can see now how everything in the Bible, the Old Testament, points us to Jesus Christ's life. Amen. This is Pastor Catherine. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this study. Bless your people. Let the message permeate their hearts and their minds and prepare them for what is about to happen in the future. And we understand and we thank you for preparing us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Have a blessed day.